Our next speaker, um, I'm not going to tell you too much about her, because I don't feel, no, I'm just kidding, but I'm, I'm, I'm not going to say too much other than it's Samantha Brinkman. So let's hear it for Samantha Brinkman. As he said, my name is Samantha Brinkman. I'm a senior here at IUPUI. I'm a health sciences major, and the School of Health and Rehab, aspiring to be an occupational therapist. My dream job is to work at Riley Hospital. I actually have an internship there now that I absolutely adore and I've learned so much at. I also love to paint. These are a couple of things that I've uh, done before. The one on the left here says, uh, think of the happiest things, it's the same as having wings. So that's a Peter Pan reference for my Disney people. And then this next quote is, be the change you hope to see in the world, which is a quote that I try to live by. I also hate Cheetos. I feel like I am probably the only person on this planet that despises that snack. Okay, good. I got a, I got a fellow person out in the crowd. I am also a dog person through and through. I'm highly allergic to cats. That might be why I despise them and I'm a little biased towards them. I also have been told that I look like Anna Kendrick, and sometimes I sound like her when I sing. And lastly, freshman year of college, I attempted suicide and the hush falls over the room. So who here completely forgot about all of those other unique characteristics when I said that I had attempted suicide? It's okay, just raise your hand. You might be a little scared to raise your hand, it's okay. You see, society, when someone comes out and says that they've struggled with suicide, or maybe even a mental illness in general, we tend to forget about all of those other wonderful characteristics that they have to offer and we let them be defined by that mental illness or that situation that they've been through. This mask might look a little scary to some of you, it might be beautiful to others of you, it depends on your opinion. When we, when we label people and we let them be defined by their illness, we're letting them hide behind a mask, we're forcing a mask over them. And if you're afraid of this mask and maybe you're wanting to turn away, that's how we tend to treat people that struggle with a mental illness. And when we unveil what's beneath that mask, you find someone that wants to impact the lives of individuals with disabilities as an occupational therapist. You find someone that loves to paint. You find someone that hates Cheetos. You find someone that's a dog person. You find very unique characteristics that you miss when you only focus on that mask. So why is any of this important? Why is mental health even important? And when I thought about this question, I actually had someone pose this question to me, and a light bulb sort of went off. What happens when you reverse that question? Why is physical health important? The answer seems obvious. We need our physical health to be a strong, functional individual and to live our best and independent lives. And we tend to compartmentalize these two things and put them in, in different sectors, when really they all are a part of one unit, and that is us as human beings, as a, as a body, as a being. And when we separate these two things, we tend to contribute to something called stigma. And stigma is the negative attitudes and perceptions that are towards individuals with mental illnesses. And we tend to label them as crazy. We tend to label them as unstable and let them be defined by their illness because we don't understand. So don't take my word for it. Let's look at the facts. Forbes magazine states one of the most widely believed and most damaging myths, keyword, is that mental illness is not a physical disease and nothing could be further from the truth. You see, let's take a depression, for example. Some physical manifestations of someone going through depression are chronic fatigue, insomnia, loss of appetite, maybe they eat too much, and they're not getting up and moving. Those are all things that are going to affect the physical elements of your body. You see how they all kind of, it's all one unit that makes you who you are. That's not enough to convince you. A study was conducted by the National Institute of Health, and it found that the lifespan of people with severe mental illnesses was shorter than the general population. In fact, 13 to 30 years 
shorter life expectancy, and their mortality rate is two to three times higher than the general population. You see the, the damaging physical effects that mental illness can have. And that excess mortality is due to physical illness. And the same thing can be reversed. If someone struggles with a physical illness, they can also acquire maybe depression from acquiring that debilitating physical illness that maybe they lost who they were. So maybe that's a lot of information. Let me give you an example. A quote from the National Institute of Health that was pulled from that study says that patients with major depression, bipolar disorder, and schizophrenia are at significantly higher risk for cardiovascular morbidity and mortality than are their general population counterparts. So what that means is someone that struggles with something like depression, bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, they are at a higher risk for cardiovascular disease. That's the common disease that we're all familiar with. Why is that? Inactivity. It's something that we, is, we think is so simple. But getting up and moving is so important as a part of who we are as a physical being. So this meme you might have seen circulating the internet, it's kind of funny, says, you know, I think if you just change your frame of mind, you'd probably feel better to someone with their hand cut off. And we laugh, but we do this to people, whether we realize it or not. We, we say to people with depression, why can't you just be happy? We say to people with anxiety, why can't you just stop worrying? We say to people with bipolar disorder, why are you just so moody? And we say these things, and we're totally missing the point. I like to picture physical health and mental health sort of like a roadmap. So we'll say that Michigan is mental health, okay? And then we'll say University Boulevard is physical health. Let's say it's, it's rush hour and everyone's driving through Michigan and it's a green light and people are going and going even though they can't clear the intersection, one of my biggest pet peeves, and they keep going and they just back up traffic. So when you back this road up, university is not going to be able to get through. So picture physical health and mental health like a traffic jam, just like that scenario. If you're constantly not taking care of your mental health, your physical health is going to get backed up and you're not going to get through that traffic light. Vice versa. If you're not taking care of yourself as a physical being, you get so stressed out and you're not taking time to just take care of you. Have a mental health day. You're not taking that time. Your mental health is going to suffer too. So you see how it all kind of comes full circle. <coughs> And it, it's one unit, and we need to stop separating them into two different units. So, simple equation. Healthy body, healthy mind, happy human. <laughs> this is a question that I was asked. My story is somewhat similar to some of these stereotypes and stigmas that we put on people that struggle with a mental illness. Like I said before, Freshman year of college, I had attempted suicide. I was often asked this question, why do you feel this way? Why, why can't you just be happy? Why would you want to take your own life? And the interesting thing is, right when I had attempted suicide, a couple months later, I had actually had a physical illness that had popped up. I had had a cyst that developed on my ovaries. Sorry, fellas in the room. <laughs> And they had thought that it, it could possibly be precancerous. Now, it ended up being no big deal, and it dissolved on its own, but it was still kind of scary. And looking back in retrospect, it's amazing to see the overwhelming support I got when I had the physical illness. I had people messaging me and calling me saying, oh, you know, I hope you're okay. I hope they figure out what's wrong. Do you need anything? Do you want me to bring you something? Are, are you doing okay? But when I struggled with the mental illness, I was questioned, I was put in a corner, I was shunned. This is a picture of me when I struggled during that time. As you can see, I am deathly skinny, 
you thought I was tiny now, it was worse. I, at the age of 18, weighed 90 pounds. My upper arm was about the size of my thigh. I was clearly not well, and I was not taking care of myself. Some of the reasons why I had struggled with depression and I ended up down this road is because I, I grew up in a very emotionally, physically, and mentally abusive household as a kid. I grew up around alcoholism, and I dealt with parents that had a nasty divorce. And that took a huge toll on me. And those are some of the reasons why I attempted. But there are also reasons why I chose to live. Some of these reasons are, I joined an amazing organization called Alpha Sigma Alpha. This organization helped me find my purpose and my true self beneath the mask. And they never once tried to put a mask over me. They unveiled it and they took me for who I was. I was voted most inspirational sister at the end of the year awards and that meant more to me than they would ever know. This is also my boyfriend and his daughter, Lily. She was the snowman at her school play last year. They are a huge support system in my life. I also started a nonprofit organization for mental illness. You might have heard of it on campus. It's called Students Who Care. I partnered with the health and wellness department to create this campaign, this It's Okay to Not Be Okay. You might have seen this around campus before if you are not a freshman. It was kind of circulating more last year. And then I also found a passion for people with disabilities. And this is what drives my future career. This was me participating in the buddy walk, and this was a buddy that I met along the way. He was amazing, and working with individuals with disabilities has really put life into perspective for me. This is a quote that I found that I think really brings everything all together. And it says, unfortunately, we live in a world where if you break your arm, everyone runs over to sign your cast. But if you tell people you're depressed, everyone runs the other way. And that, people, is stigma. Stigma, like I said, is those negative attitudes and perceptions that we hold against people. It's telling them people are defined by their illness. It's treating mental health the same as physical health. And those are, those are some takeaways I want you to remember. People are not defined by their illness. If you're suffering from depression, if you have bipolar disorder, if you have suicidal thoughts, that doesn't have to make you all of who you are. Treat mental health the same as physical health. Remember that road traffic jam example. Very simple, but very profound. And lastly, what I want you to remember is it's okay to not be okay. Like I said, I, I partnered with the health and wellness department on a campaign, and this was a quote that I used. It's very simple, but it speaks volumes. This quote means that if I'm not okay right now, that's okay. But I'm going to be okay, and there are resources for help out there. And if anyone here is struggling, you're in that chair, you haven't done it, you're here for a reason. You may not be able to think of all the reasons that I thought of. I thought of several. You may be only able to think of one reason. And if you can think of one reason, I want you to hold on to that for your life. Here's the number for the suicide prevention hotline, the national one. And if you're struggling, I, I really encourage you to call this number and even come and talk to me after this. I would love to hear your story and I'd love to give you more resources for help. So like I said, find that one reason and hold on to it.